Welcome to The Bow Show. I want to talk today about what it means to be counterculture. Usually, counterculture is a culture whose values and norms differ substantially from mainstream society, sometimes even diametrically opposed. In the Western world, prime examples of counterculture would be bohemianism in the late 1800s, or the Beat Generation from 1944 to 64, and the counterculture of the 1960s. The 60s are of particular note because they combined revolutions of many different kinds, especially musically. The term contraculture was created in 1960 by John Milton Yinger in his article in American Sociological Review. Mainstream, of course, can be difficult to define, but we know that counterculture represents a divergence, if not opposition to, the mainstream. Sometimes counterculture can be viewed through the prism of a generational conflict and a rejection of older or adult values. In this way, you might even think of counterculture as a more liberal culture to reject the traditional or conservative values of an older generation. It may or may not be intrinsically political, but it does seem to reject certain institutions. Even so, counterculture and mainstream represent a symbiotic yin and yang where both kinds of can, can, can kind of coexist and represent laboratories of ideas. The 60s, of course, were prominent for the hippies, perhaps one of the most identifiable counterculture groups. Counterculture is not always seen as utopian, though, because the deaths of figures such as Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, and Jim Morrison reminded us that even festivals like Woodstock can be milestones of a dystopian element of counterculture, that it's not always for the best. The 60s also spawned new literature, such as features in The Village Voice, International Times, and Oz Magazine. Clouds of marijuana could be a trademark of the 1960s counterculture as well. Media also has its own countercultural function. Marcel Duchamp's art piece Fountain was meant to be a calculated attack on the most basic conventions of art. Music also is a sign of countercultural times. When you think about the Vietnam War, you remember songs like For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield. There's something happening here What it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me to beware I think it's time we stop children what's that sound everybody look what's going down as well as Credence Clearwater Revival's Fortunate Son and Edwin Starr's War War huh. yeah what is it good for absolutely nothing What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Music, of course, has its own special place in culture and certainly marks a kind of renegade or rebellious spirit. From 1964 to 1972, so many cultural shifts happened in the United States that had musical, artistic, political, fashion, drug, and sexual undertones. Perhaps more generally, these attitudes challenged conventional beliefs, and intentionally so. If mainstream culture was to be monogamous or celibate, 60s counterculture was free love, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. The hippie movement may seem to have largely died out, but we still have music festivals such as Bonnaroo and Burning Man that capture a youthful independence. So now that we are in 2022, what exactly is mainstream? And what is the antagonistic counterculture? Well, I contend that mainstream culture is now a product of what counterculture of the 60s gave us, a widespread leftism. I want to differentiate that leftism with liberalism because certainly the values of the 60s were liberal. People protested the Vietnam War and people flashed the universal peace sign. But John F. Kennedy does not even seem like a Democrat by today's standards at all. But what has happened is that those voices who challenged the government in Vietnam have become the generation that not only no longer challenges anything, but seeks to dispel dissent and maintain an absolute authority. 
with the help of the TV news and media, as well as entertainment and big tech, there's been a push to shape mainstream culture into one that accepts certain beliefs and disparages others. It is not the classic liberal ethos, and I mean that with a small l, which would promote freedom of speech, free-flowing information, and diversity of ideas. It is capital L liberalism, which means leftism as the new norm, where nothing conservative or traditional is allowed. To this new mainstream, everything must be in lockstep. There is no intellectual diversity that can challenge norms. I think of the original counterculture as the Founding Fathers. They stood up to the mainstream tyranny of King George. That was the status quo. But these rebels in the colony said, no more. They had to create a counterculture that was rooted in some basic ideas, which were all in promotion of democracy and liberty. Those were the antithesis of a monarchy. They were the antagonist, and they won. The new mainstream was thus the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and that served America quite well. That's a good kind of mainstream culture to have, where everyone can speak out. But that has devolved into a bloated government that decides things for you. That was never the intent of the Founding Fathers and the system that they created. Counterculture won't always be defined by bell bottoms and peace symbols. It may look like you at your cubicle, or if you're remote, you in your sweatpants. It may be a 17 year old listening to a Jordan Peterson podcast, or a retiree worried about making ends meet. Look at what the counterculture of communism did in the Soviet Union, China, and Cambodia. It certainly wasn't pretty. These social changes created misery, and many live under those regimes to this day. The way that those regimes stamp out any counterculture there is to kill it or to punish it. They simply don't permit counterculture. In America, as I said, the new mainstream isn't your parents' or even grandparents' mainstream. It's a new mainstream created by a bunch of globalists designed to make you think it's mainstream. Donald Trump and his MAGA populist movement was the first real modern counterculture we have seen in recent times. It was intended to break down the existing structure of endless wars, globalism, and unfair trade in America getting ripped off. Trump, as rich as he was, was actually fighting for the little guy. So in 2016, Hillary Clinton was the mainstream. She was someone who had waited a long time for a crack at being president. And convention seemed that it would happen. The mainstream did everything it could to help her. That's how we get the phrase mainstream media. There's no diversity to it. In some cases, many media outlets actually even use the same exact copy in their scripts. Trump was someone who challenged everything. When advisors told him, sir, you can't get Mexico to do this or that, or you can't get NATO, they'll never pay up for our protection of our allies. These were all things Trump was told, and he challenged that conventional wisdom. Whether or not you liked Trump's style and his rhetoric, he was a wrecking ball to mainstream culture because mainstream culture was no longer the patriotic, American dream pursuing, family oriented, personal liberty society it once was. It had gone from the universal comedy of Johnny Carson to the overly biased leftism of Stephen Colbert and Seth Meyers. It has traversed from the trusted voice of Walter Cronkite to the dry musings of Don Lemon. Even before Trump took office, mainstream culture had begun its war on him and everything that was associated with him. It made sure that they influenced everyone they could by pushing agendas through their various outlets. Congress itself did it with endless, empty investigations. They knew that most people might have a hard time believing that Trump colluded with Russia, but they tried with all their might to make that view the mainstream view. Once Biden took office, they steered everything right back into place. And the biggest example of what is mainstream culture right now is vaccine culture, Fauci culture. They have masked this, <laughs> pun intended, in a neat little box that makes you think that Uncle Joe is just a dear old man. But when you look at the policies, it's all meant to appear that questioning anything that is happening right now is not just counterculture and out of the mainstream, but downright tinfoil hat cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Where better can this be embodied than the current vaccine debate? In my last show, I focused on tennis star Novak Djokovic, who has now been deported from Australia because he's not vaccinated. 
the immigration minister there said it was for the basic good of the Australian public. He thinks one guy who recovered from COVID one month ago is a bigger threat to Australia than North Korea or a Chinese supersonic missile. I must have touched a nerve in that show because lots of you are chiming in on it. And we know that at the center of the Djokovic situation is personal liberty and medical freedom. Globalists want mainstream culture to be 100% triple vaccinated, if not more. They celebrate lockdowns. Even many Australian people have bought into this lie. If you question anything about the safety or efficacy of these shots, you are a heretic. Speaking of music, Joe Biden enlisted the help of artists like Olivia Rodrigo and the Jonas Brothers to push his mandates, even though the Supreme Court has struck the mandate down for companies with over 100 employees. The Supreme Court, believe it or not, is counterculture. You watching this show right now are the counterculture. Conservative and libertarian and traditional are the new counterculture. You are challenging conventional belief. You are challenging the most trusted medical expert, Anthony Fauci, who has served in five, five presidential administrations, but who has been consistently wrong in his analysis and advice. You are challenging baseless congressional investigations with your money. You are using the greatest tool God gave you, your brain. And you are equipped with the sublime documents that our founders gave us. I've seen the new counterculture. You know who they are? They're the parent at the Loudoun County School Board meeting who might be considered a domestic terrorist. When all they want is education, not indoctrination. It's the college student who went to a Turning Point USA event. It's a middle-aged listener to the Joe Rogan podcast. It's a female who says, my body, my choice. And that means what injections I decide to, to get. It's the group of veterans with military hats that are meeting for coffee. Counterculture folks need not be violent. What we saw in the BLM riots was not counterculture. That was destroyer culture. The Women's March in DC, that wasn't even counterculture. That was mainstream culture primarily screaming to get its power back. But counterculture also isn't breaking into the Capitol building. That is highly unproductive and regressive and gets a smart movement looking stupid. People know better than to trespass. Today's counterculturists have to find new methods and means. They have to be smart enough to know that Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Google have created algorithms and committees to root out conservative ideas and groups. They have to be nimble and creative. Look, counterculture conservatives are clearly winning the meme war. Comedy and satire and parody are very much in the right places. Look at the Babylon Bee. <laughs> the Bee makes you laugh. Late night TV, mm-mm, doesn't. Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida is a new face in the counterculture movement. He's the spry, youthful voice that has decided to make Florida great and keep it great. He's doing everything that he believes his state can do better than the other 49. Fundamentally, that's all about freedom and challenging bad ideas. The mainstream has tried to do its best to make sure that everyone is in lockstep. You think you'd have Tons of musicians protesting authoritarianism like they did in Vietnam. The ones that I see today that are challenging status quo are old schoolers like Eric Clapton and Van Morrison who are wise. Was I supposed to expect some sort of prolific commentary from Miley Cyrus and Pete Davidson? I watched part of their New Year's Eve special and I'll never get that time back. Once again, these two are not counterculture. They are warped culture. It's honestly important to identify the tastemakers because they may look like they're one thing, but they're entirely another. Most entertainers feel like they have to support leftists and liberals, but they don't even realize why they do that. They think that they are being provocative and promoting artistic expression, but they don't realize they're just another brick in the wall of mainstream culture. See, this is the bill of goods being sold to you as mainstream. You are told that you have all these rights. No, 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 not the, not the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness that used to be mainstream, but a new set of made-up rights. Maybe those are rights to whatever it is you want. The right to be lazy. The right to do less than the rest, but get rewarded for it. The right to be in an oppressed class, race, or gender, whereby you can be rewarded for that perceived injustice. Mainstream is not 
work hard and get ahead. It's let's level the playing field by rewarding a part of you that's not work related. Let's celebrate a movement that is destructive and riotous. Let's make sure that this person of one color of skin has a much, much harder time to get into college or get this job than this other person of a more desirable skin color. Mainstream culture is equality of outcome, not opportunity. They've really turned this thing upside down. You see, counterculture, as clinical psychologist Dr. Jordan Peterson argues, is the act of responsibility, of lifting a load, of being useful and having meaning. It's the opposite of doing nothing and being rewarded for it. Take a listen to this lecture of his. You have choice. Well, the thing is, is that people will carry a heavy load if they get to pick the goddamn load. So, and they think, well, I won't carry any load. It's like, okay, fine, but then you're like the sled dog that doesn't have a sled to pull. You're just gonna, you're gonna tear pieces out of your own legs because you're bored. You know, you need, people are pack animals. They need, they need to pull against a weight. And, and that's not true for everyone. It's not true particularly, say, for low conscientious people. I mean, maybe they're open and creative or extroverted and some other things. But for the, for the typical person, they, they, they'll, eat they'll eat themselves up unless they have a load. This is why there's such an opiate epidemic among uh, dispossessed white middle-aged guys who are unemployed in the US. It's like they lose their job, they're done, right? They despise themselves. They develop chronic pain syndromes and depression. And the chronic pain is treated with opiates. It's like, that's what we're doing. So, yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Is you, you have to, and it's so interesting to watch the young men when you talk to them about responsibility. They're so thrilled about it. It just blows me away. It's like, really? That's what's, that's the counterculture. Grow the hell up and do something useful. Really, I could do that? Oh, I'm so excited by that idea. No one ever mentioned that before. It's like rights, 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 rights. Jesus, it's, it's, it's appalling. It's, it's, and, and I feel that that's deeply felt by the people who are, who are coming out to, to listen to these sorts of things too. They're, they've had enough of that. So, and they better have because it's, it's a non-productive mode of being. Responsibility, man. That's where the meaning in life is. I found this compelling because Peterson was trying to work with the Conservative Party in Canada about how to reach young people, which can sometimes be difficult. And he said that it's a tough sell, but the right sell is responsibility. The notion of actually getting off your butt and doing something. Most conservatives actually feel that way, but they're getting discouraged by a mainstream culture that punishes straight white men for being straight white men. Conservatives, by and large, don't believe in handouts. They believe in the satisfaction of pulling the load. But mainstream culture has created a generation of TikTok idiots who think that copying a dance is somehow a self-respecting career and carrying responsibility. Look at what they did with Colin Kaepernick. They gave him millions and a Netflix deal, all for his perceived oppression and him rejecting American old mainstream ideas. The dude was adopted by a wealthy white family. You see what I'm saying? He was rich by pure luck. And then he rails against the very good luck he had so that he can go out there and tell everyone else how oppressed he is so that we can topple this antiquated system and replace it with the idea of rewarding nothing. No, not that if you work hard, you can make it into the NFL, but that America is so awful that we need a new culture, a culture that rejects rejects one idea of race and replaces it with another. That's not responsibility at all. We just celebrated MLK Day. And I thought we were supposed to be judged by the content of our character, not our skin. And Peterson shows disgust when he talks about how they just chirp, rights, 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 rights at all these people all the time so that they feel this entitlement. That's mainstream now. They've made it that way. You see now why counterculture to that is the mere idea of basic responsibility especially for men. And that's not even necessarily the idea of raising a family, although that's certainly part of it. A man is not even gonna think about a family if he loses his job in a pandemic and can't even provide for himself. So they turn to the opiates and fentanyl. Fentanyl is the number one killer of Americans age 18 to 45. And we're still talking about the bloody COVID pandemic and shots. Australia deported the number one tennis player for not taking a jab because of the perceived public health risk as our young people are dying like flies from fentanyl. <laughs> yeah, man, that's the right strategy.
Mainstream culture is Anthony Fauci. They put him on magazines. Andrew Cuomo was mainstream, had his own groupies. Counterculture is the opposite of those guys. It's doing your own research. It's taking what they're saying with a grain of salt. Cuomo was a disaster for New York, but mainstream culture preserves and protects people like him. On top of all this is social media or big tech as they are called. And they're more influential than you may think in terms of creating culture because they do much of it subliminally. It may be how the Google graphic looks today when you search. And it's certainly in the first page of search results. It determines what you see and the preferred narratives. YouTube removed several of Joe Rogan's interviews with doctors because they have teams now that are supposed to root out misinformation. They can prevent the spread of any idea or group or person that they dislike. All of them do this. Once again, the original 1776 counterculture idea was, hey, everyone should be able to speak up. Well, big tech went back to the monarchy days and said, nope, we will decide who gets to speak and how loudly. So you see why I say that current counterculture is like the original 1776 idea? It's fighting against suppression. It's pushing back against the notion that King George or King Fauci know best. Counterculture has always been a laboratory of alternative ideas that challenge norms. Although the hippies got drugged out and comprised counterculture in the 1960s, today's counterculture can be one of responsibility, of a work ethic, of more traditional values, of the scientific method, not unscientific dogma. The young people that I see in today's conservative culture are well-dressed, mannerly, educated, and diverse. If you watched my show from Turning Point USA, you will see what I mean. Counterculture is a healthy, productive challenge. Conservatism, or even let's expand that to just classic small L liberalism. That's the new counterculture. And it brings us back to the spirit of 1776. I'm Bo, and that's the show.